What is up everybody? It is Axel Beats here for Anime Uproar and today I will be going over every single new stand in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 6 Stone Ocean. For those who might have missed it, the series began streaming on Netflix recently and there's already 12 episodes up covering the first third or about 50 chapters of the manga. We will be discussing all of the stands which make appearances in that time as well as the remaining ones in the series. If you enjoy seeing Stone Ocean content on this channel, and you want to see more, you know what to do, hit that like button, and if you're new here to Anime Uproar, be sure to hit the subscribe button as well, and select all notifications. I know these seem like pretty small things, but they mean a lot for the channel, and they help ensure that you get notified when new content goes live. You can also follow Anime Uproar at Anime Uproar on Twitter and Instagram, or you can follow myself at ExcellionYT. Obviously, there will be manga spoilers in this video, as we are covering the entirety of the Stone Ocean manga, but if you're okay with that, let's jump into the video. So the first stand that we meet belongs to our protagonist, Jolene Kujo, and is called Stone Free. However, as it is tradition in the JoJo series, the localized name was changed to become Stone Ocean. Originally, Stone Free is a reference to the Jimi Hendrix song of the same name. Stone Free is one of the most versatile stands in Part 6, by far. Jillian can unravel her body into string and manipulate it freely. Stone freely, if you will. The string isn't extremely durable, but it can be sharp enough to cut someone, and it's precise enough to steal something from a guard's pocket without them noticing. The string can also be molded or shaped into things like nets, blankets, or even manifest as a typical stand similar to Star Platinum. In this manifested form, it has a range of about 2 meters, while the loose string can stretch much further up to about 24 meters. There can also be combined elements where the full stone free is manifested and strings will still offshoot from her as well. Jolene can unravel up to 70% of her body to produce string, and an added benefit of which is she becomes much more flexible as her body is used up to make the string. The strings can also be used to eavesdrop, stitch up wounds, swing like Spider-Man, detect movement, and a bunch of more straightforward uses like the net that I mentioned previously. All in all, just a very useful and versatile stand that makes for a pretty compelling tool for the protagonist. Our second stand, Goo Goo Dolls, was named after the band of the same name and was localized as either GG Dolls or Cry Cry Dolls depending on the medium. The stand belongs to Gwes, Jolene's cellmate, and is designed to look like a mummified monkey. Which is fun, I guess. Physically, Goo Goo Dolls is definitely on the weaker side of stands due to its tiny size, however, its ability to shrink others who are in its range definitely helps to even the odds. This shrinking happens instantly and is unnoticeable by the victim at first, leaving them to be the size of a mouse for as long as Gwes wants, or until they're far enough away from her for the effects to be negated, at which point they will start to grow back to their normal size. Our third stand is Manhattan Transfer, named after the vocal jazz group, the Manhattan Transfer. This was a drone-like stand belonging to John Gallier. The stand itself does very little and is essentially a sitting duck, however it does allow John Gallier to know the precise location of his opponents so that he can snipe them from afar. Even if the opponent is hiding, bullets can be ricocheted off of Manhattan Transfer to hit them around corners. Furthermore, Manhattan Transfer can read air currents to sense motion, to the point that it can even dodge the prison sprinkler system. It then sends this information back to John Gallier, and when combined with his own talents for sniping, it makes for a deadly stand, despite how simple it is. The next stand we learn about in the series is White Snake, named after the band of the same name. This one's name was changed to Pale Snake and belonged to Enrico Pucci. One of the most interesting parts of the stand is that despite it being owned by Pucci, it also seems to have its own self-awareness and will. White Snake has a pretty decent range of about 20 meters, but despite that, it's almost as fast and strong as most close-range stands, even being able to keep up with Stone Free, although probably not able to overpower them. Because of this, it tends to rely on ambushes to get the upper hand. White Snake has a few main abilities that it works with, First, Melt Your Heart and Illusion, an acid-based ability that slowly digests those it covers. On top of this, anyone who's caught in the acid will become trapped in a dream. If they realize they're dreaming, if they notice any errors in the world, or if they receive a shock from the outside world, they'll be able to wake up, but they will still be fairly drained of their energy in that case. This illusion is also seen to allow him to disguise himself as other people, so it's pretty versatile. Secondly is White Snake's most useful ability, Disc Creation. This allows him to extract a person's memory and stand from their body, and put them in discs that can be put into others or stored away. 
If both are removed, the target will fall unconscious, or could even die. If the memory disc is implanted back in them, though, it will revive them. However, if only the stand disc is returned, the person can regain consciousness, but their loss of will will result in the death of the body eventually. Discs can also contain instructions or commands that must be followed, steal senses like vision, enable impossible things like a person exploding or showing strength greater than their normal limits, and so on. It can even turn someone's head into a music player, which is pretty fitting for the disc theme. What I really like about this stand is just like Jolene's Stone Free, this strength doesn't come from raw power, but instead comes from versatility and the options that it presents. Hermes Costello's stand was named Kiss and was named after the hard rock band of the same name eventually being localized to Smack, which is much less cool, unfortunately. The main ability of Kiss is its duplicating stickers. She can reproduce an exact copy of anything that she puts a sticker on. This can even include biological things like limbs or a head. The copy can go any distance away, however, once the sticker is removed, the objects will launch back at each other and fuse with a pretty devastating force. Highway to Hell or Highway to Death is a stand belonging to Thunder McQueen, and was named after the ACDC song and album of the same name. This stand is unable to damage others on its own, however, it does replicate any damage or unfortunate situation that the user takes onto itself. So, since Thunder McQueen tries to end his own life on repeat, it becomes incredibly dangerous for Hermes, who becomes linked with him. For example, if McQueen tries to drown himself, water would cover Hermes' mouth and nose so that she would drown as well. There also doesn't seem to be any range limit, so the only way to stop this stand is to stop McQueen from trying to end his own life, or to take away the disc with his stand ability. Burning the House Down, named after the Talking Heads song and localized as Burning Down, is the stand of Emporio Al Nino. It is one of those very strange and specific stands that each JoJo series tends to incorporate, kind of similar to Earth, Wind, and Fire from Part 5. Burning the House Down is a stand with no real form itself, but which is linked to a location and item within the prison, taking on the appearance of a ghostly music room which was burned down in the prison in the 1980s. This gives Emporio absolutely no abilities in a fight, even the ghostly gun that he has is pointless as it can't interact with others. To reach this ghostly room, a stand user needs to go through a crack in one of the walls of the prison stairwells, However, as most are unaware of the stand or Imperio in general, they often go ignored. Foo Fighters, named after a band of the same name, was changed to FF for localization reasons. Well, this is sort of true. In both versions, the name is shortened to FF, but the full name Foo Fighters isn't used in the localization version at all. FF is a bit of a special case as they're a mix of both stand and stand user, and beyond that, they aren't even human. Rather, they are a colony of plankton that has a stand. Because FF is made of plankton, it doesn't really have any weaknesses other than that it might dry out. Furthermore, as it is a colony, it can even split itself into smaller bodies which will remain like-minded while independent. The stand has a ton of versatility, durability, and strength, and even if it's mostly destroyed and only one piece of plankton remains, that's all that's really needed for it to survive, and if given water, it can start to regain its form. Other abilities belonging to Foo Fighters includes stealing someone's body or taking over their consciousness, which will even give her access to memories, manipulating water to some degree, shooting parts of its body out like a gun, and this plankton bullet can then spread inside of someone else and take control of them, or it can even be used to make a makeshift stitch or band-aid to prevent bleeding out if someone is wounded. Again, this is just another example of a very versatile stand that gives a lot of options. You just gotta watch out for sponges because it's basically game over if she comes across one. Next up is a stand that actively made me burst out laughing when I saw the localization. Marilyn Manson, or Mary Lynn Manson, is named after the singer of the same name, and it's just such a lazy localization. It belongs to Mirashone, and much like the Dobby Brothers, it works on kind of a game or gambling system. The stand is actually fairly simple, it just ensures that the rules or conditions of a bet are stuck to no matter what. It will 100% follow through on that wager, However, it also is open to listening to reason or explanations to ensure that the game is fair. For example, when being forced to play a game of catch, Jolene said that she never specified who she would play the game of catch with, allowing her to take the ball back from the prison guard without any penalty. 
If the original conditions of the wager cannot be met, substitutes will be made instead. For example, if I bet $1,000 but I only have 100, Marilyn Manson might take one of my eyes as payment, and that might be the strangest sentence I've ever had to say for a video. The stand itself is invincible and can't take damage while collecting a debt, and it's only able to be stopped either when it finishes collecting the debt, or if Mirshon calls it off or is knocked out. Weather Report, or Weather Forecast, is named after a jazz fusion band, and is the only example of a man who received only his stand disc back, but remains to be more or less healthy. This is a pretty powerful stand, all things considered, with the ability to control the weather and the atmosphere. It covers all the bases you might expect, creating wind, rain, clouds, humidity, all the normal weather manipulating stuff. However, it can also create localized atmosphere, wind bursts so strong that they can pierce directly through someone, create suits made out of clouds, or even freeze liquids. It really is the loosest variation of the idea of manipulating weather, and the stand has a plethora of options available at all times. The big example from early on is when it used a tornado to suck up a bunch of wildlife and create a rain of poisonous frogs. This also has a bit of an upgraded version later in the story with Heavy Weather, named after an album from The Weather Report, which I really do like the attention to detail of having the stand named after the band become one of their albums. It's a very nice touch. What is not so nice is Heavy Weather itself. This stand is automatically functioning and fueled by its hatred for humanity. He gets some new abilities in this form, many of which are just kind of strange. For example, Snail Projection. Yes, you heard me right. Heavy Weather makes rainbows that will turn anyone else who touches them into snails. It could be big ones, it could be small ones, they could change very slowly or instantly. Truly, this is the epitome of power. Furthermore, these snails love to procreate, and they'll begin to spread to the point that they could even overrun an entire city if they're not addressed. Which again, is both hilarious and terrifying. Next up, Jumpin' Jack Flash, named after the Rolling Stones song. It was localized to Jumping Jack Spark, and the stand belongs to Lang Wrangler. Jumpin' Jack's main ability is to remove gravity. Anyone that he spits on will become the epicenter of an area with zero gravity, which is completely disorienting and will leave them vulnerable. On top of this, anyone or anything that they touch will also gain these effects as well. While this is a pretty strong one in itself, it can also be used to create a vacuum within air, to drain blood from open wounds, or to boil people's blood. And that's just to name a few aspects. While Lang is not immune to these effects, he has practiced in these scenarios which helps him quite a bit. Along with that, he uses suction cups on his hands and feet to stick to walls and control the situation a little bit more easily. Finally, he has centrifuges in each of his wrists, which allow him to pour objects inside of them and fire them off like a rifle at high speeds. It's definitely one of the stands that has a lot more side effects to offer than others, but I think that makes it a really interesting one even if Lang Wrangler looks a bit lame himself. Following Jumping Jack Flash, we have what is personally my favorite localization of any stand in the entire series. Well, maybe other than filthy deeds done at a reasonable price, but both of them are phenomenal. Truly, this is the peak that Araki has reached, and he should have put his pen down here, because Limp Biscuit, named after the band of the same name, was changed to Flaccid Pancake belonging to a man named Sports Max, with two X's, which is just amazing when thought about in a package, because Limp Biscuit, Flaccid Pancake, Sports Max. Oh, I love it so much. This is an invisible stand that can bring back the dead as invisible spirits to attack enemies. Flaccid Pancake, which I refuse to call it Limp Biscuit from this point on, can bring back people, animals, or even its own user in this way. Once revived, the race can be killed again in normal ways, however their original body takes the damage. Wraiths are stronger than their human forms, can walk on walls, and of course they crave for brains and blood. Now from here on out, most of the stands don't yet have localized names, although we will likely get them when the series continues on Netflix depending on how licensing goes. Diver Down, named after the Van Halen album, belongs to Narciso Anasui, whose name I probably mispronounced. 
This is a pretty powerful combat stand, but it's also incredibly useful for support. Its main ability is to store energy or damage, so if it hits something, the damage can be stored up until a time of his choosing. For example, I could punch a wall 50 times and then trigger all of the impacts in one moment to increase the force drastically. That said, he could also use this ability to effectively negate damage that an ally might take. On top of this, Diver Down has the ability to phase in or dive into objects or people, then manipulating or changing them however he'd like. He can destroy them, he can help them by removing things like parasitic plants, it's just a super useful and great supporting tool, on top of just being pretty powerful in its own right. Guccio's stand, Survivor, is named after the band of the same name. It isn't particularly powerful, and Dio even called it the weakest of all stands, but it is incredibly frustrating. This is an uncontrollable automatic stand, which consists of several small creatures, and it exists purely to create mayhem. Basically, this stand sends a small shock into its target that will make them want to fight those around them. Anyone affected becomes a better fighter, ignores pain, and can see the muscles and weak points of their enemy, ensuring a pretty good brawl. Like I said, it's pretty simple, not at all threatening, but if you've looked into the series at all, you know how aggressive all of the characters can be, especially in Part 6, and Survivor just cranks that all up to the max. Sports Max. Planet Waves, named after the Bob Dylan album and belonging to Viviano Westwood, is a stand that we don't actually see fight. We know it is insanely dangerous though, as it has the ability to attract meteoroids down to Earth and towards a person of their choosing. Any meteor which might accidentally hit the user will disintegrate, while others that target enemies come in at insane speeds and temperatures up to 3000 degrees. These meteoroids will continue to fall every few seconds or minutes until they're called off, and that said, most of them are fairly small so they can be obstructed. However, larger ones could be called down as well. Dragon's Dream, which I think is named after a book written by Roger Dean, although I couldn't really find confirmation, please let me know in the comments down below if you do know, is the Stand of Kenzo. This stand is basically a sentient dragon that can act independently of Kenzo. Similar to Marilyn Manson, the stand, not the singer, Dragon's Dream acts as a judge during fights and aims to keep things as fair as possible. The stand doesn't attack on its own and leaves Kenzo to take on enemies. However, that said, Kenzo does get a boost in his own abilities because he has Dragon's Dream. This makes him an expert in feng shui, and is honestly one of the more complicated stands to explain, but the gist of it is that he can read signals sent from Dragon's Dream to make himself aware of lucky spots where he can easily dodge things, or unlucky spots where he can get critical strikes on his opponents, sometimes even mortal wounds. The stand more or less turns the fight into a minigame that allows him to get major bonuses to both his survivability and lethality if he's doing well. As Dragon Dream aims for neutrality though, he will warn the opponent about these points and explain his abilities before going into the fight. Yo-Yo Ma, named after the Chinese musician, belongs to D and G, and it is another automatic stand, however this one is incredibly smart and nearly indestructible. Its core ability is to spit acid on people, which will not do any noticeable harm nor cause any pain, but instead it will eat at them very slowly and secretly. It's kind of up to them to notice and to do something about it. Once given an order or a goal, Yo-Yo Ma will just work independently towards that goal until it's achieved. Green Green Grass of Home, named after the Porter Wagner song, belongs to the Green Baby. It is composed of 36 souls and acts to protect the Green Baby. Similar to Goo Goo Dolls, Green Green Grass shrinks others. However, this is more of an automated system. The closer anything gets to the Green Baby, the smaller it will become. Similarly, as they start to move out of the range, they will start returning to their usual size. Once someone gets too close to the Baby though and have reached their smallest point, Green Green Grass will appear to attack them, looking like a titan in comparison. Finally, if the Baby does pick something up or becomes interested in it, they will return to their normal size. Jailhouse Lock, named after the Elvis song Jailhouse Rock, and belonging to Miyuka Mueller. This one is pretty interesting as it limits the way its targets are able to act. It does so by making it so that they can only remember three new pieces of information after they touch the walls or bars of the visiting room in the jail. It can also be activated if Miyuka sends the stand to actually target someone as well though. 
Anyone affected by Jailhouse Lock will keep their old memories, however as soon as the stand is activated they will only be able to learn three new things. Anything beyond that will make them lose the first new thing that they've learned, essentially locking them out of any complex tasks and eventually ruining their ability to think. Miyuka tends to take advantage of this by giving new information in rapid succession, completely disorienting the target. Moving into our last five, Sea Moon, named after the song by Wing and localized as Full Moon, is another stand used by Enrico Pucci. Specifically, this is the fusion of Pucci and the Green Baby. It visually takes on a few traits of White Snake, like the pattern across his body and its crown, however, it gains a couple new tricks. This is a remote control stand that can shift gravity. Anything within three kilometers of Pucci can have its gravity shifted to be pushed away from Pucci. This can also just straight up launch things off the planet if they're not tied down. It also gives him a bit of mobility options as well, allowing him to walk vertically up walls by pulling his feet towards any surface that they're touching, or even allowing him to levitate. Obviously, this ability can be turned off whenever Pucci wants, because if he wasn't able to, he would just never be able to be near anything ever. Of course, the abilities don't stop there. If Sea Moon touches or punches anything, they will turn inside out. If hit again, they will revert back to normal which doesn't sound like a great time. While in general this is incredibly dangerous, it can also be used defensively, as Pucci can turn himself inside out to avoid damage. Lastly, Simun can accelerate time in a small area touched by or near Pucci. For example, growing one half of a baby to be an adult, or instantly turning eggs into full-grown chickens. That said, Pucci can't really control this ability and it will activate without his discretion. Bohemian Rhapsody is obviously named after the Queen Song and is a stand belonging to Ungalo. This affects the entire world and can bring fictional characters from media into reality. Which like, I mean I'd be okay with this one sticking around for a bit. Now it's not all good times in waifus though, as when you come across a character you like, your soul becomes dragged into that character's place in their original story. The soul and body become divided, similar to White Snake's discs, and only the soul portion of you can use stands. Furthermore, if you die in that story, you die in real life. Even if you know what's going to happen in that story, nothing can change that character's path. So, if you were to become Gwen Stacy, there is no amount of back braces in the world that could keep you alive. The only way out of that situation is to kill the manifested version of that character in the real world. People who live under rocks actually have a bit of advantage against the stand, as if you don't have any affiliation towards the character brought to life, you'll be unaffected. However, if dozens of characters are brought into the real world at once, it's pretty unlikely that you won't know any of them. The only real way to defeat the stand is for a writer to create a character that can erase other fictional characters, which is pretty meta. Sky High, named after the Jigsaw song, belongs to Rikiel. This is a bit of a weird one which allows Rikiel to control things called rods or skyfish. These float in the air and move so fast that you can't see them with the normal eye, but they can be picked up by cameras, which since they're entirely based on the idea of cryptids, is pretty fun. Their main ability is to absorb people's body heat to fuel themselves, something which can result in the victim facing several diseases or illnesses. Basically, they drain people's heat until they get sick, but if they want, they can also localize the heat drain to a very specific point of the body. This can lead to effects like blinding the enemy by forcing their eyelids shut, shutting down or rotting muscles, making people see things with delay or lag, forcing people to die by slowing their brain or heart, or even numbing pain for Rikiel. It's very versatile for something so simple as draining heat, and it has a pretty fun theme. Our second last stand is Underworld, named after the band of the same name and belonging to Donatello Versus. This is another stand which offers almost no combat ability, but it does support its user in the fight. The main ability of Underworld is to bring up memories or events from the past that he pulls from the earth or from bodies within it. The core idea is that the ground remembers everything that happens on it. This is similar to Bohemian Rhapsody as it traps its victims in another reality. Underworld can place targets within memories, such as something devastating like a plane or car crash, or something fun like a football game. Really, any situation could be brought up as long as he's able to dig up the correct memory. 
Once in that memory, it's up to the target to find a way out of it through loopholes in the situation. For example, if you find someone who survives the memory, you can always use them as some kind of protection by following their lead. As you might expect for a memory-based ability, you can also use the stand to take information from someone as well. And our last stand is Made in Heaven, which is a reference to the Freddie Mercury song. It is also the final stand of Enrico Pucci. This stand is so powerful that Dio actually refers to it as the ultimate stand and the key to heaven. And when Dio is praising something that is not himself, it's probably something we should really consider. While Sea Moon was the fusion of Pucci and Green Baby, this soul was formed when 36 others joined them. So, lots of setup, what can it actually do though? As it is the big bad stand for a JoJo series, it obviously has time manipulating powers. Once activated, time will begin to speed up more and more across the entire universe, but no living thing other than Pucci can keep up with it. Something which basically makes him a god. The delay is so big that people in cold places will instantly freeze. Anyone driving a vehicle will crash immediately. People are just unable to react to anything that happens around them, which as you might guess leads to quite a few deaths. This is to the point that even Star Platinum, who can freeze time, has no chance of keeping up with him. And the wild part? This isn't even the ability that Pucci was trying to achieve. This is a secondary one. The big effect is Universal Reset. As time moves forward, the universe eventually hits its vanishing point and a new universe begins, where all things move according to fate. Any and all living things will be brought into the new universe to a time and place chosen by Pucci, and anyone who died will be replaced by a parallel version of themselves, though they will essentially be entirely different people. On top of this, all people will remember their previous universe life, and this means that they will also know what will happen to them in the future, a method thought up by Pucci to make people accept fate. Finally, if Pucci happens to be killed before the universe resets again, a new alternate timeline will begin, leading us into part 7, Steel Ball Run. And that's it! Every new stand that we meet in Stone Ocean. Yes, we see some returning stands like Star Platinum, or we see references to the world here and there in this series, but those are pre-existing stands. If you really need a quick definition for those ones, they go oonga boonga, they punch things real hard, they can stop time briefly, the end. This was actually a really fun video to make though, and I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I did. If you did, remember to leave a like and be sure to comment what kind of Stone Ocean content you would like to see from me going forward. And of course, you need to be sure to hit that subscribe button and select all notifications to be aware of those videos once they actually come out. You can also follow Anime Uproar at Anime Uproar on Twitter and Instagram, or you can follow myself at ExcellionYT. I want to take a moment to thank all of our amazing Anime Uproar patrons for making videos like this possible. A special thanks to Alpha Sigma and Kyle Salisbury, who are disciples of Lord Twigo himself, as well as our the one tier patrons who rise above all others, with Ingrata, Algetal, Pate Hefe, the Red Haired Fox, Hinokami and Water, the Toasted Chi, Cory McCowan, the Spike 8227, Lonely Dakar, Spidey Life Tanel, Tungsten Tarkus, Baked Buddhist, Jeremy Cummings, and Che Whitley. Finally, a big thanks to our Pro Hero tier patrons, Gilgamesh, Steelers, Angel Cruz, Very Gucci, Alicia Octor, Bonnie Parks, Joanne Garcia, Fat Boy Games, Kaido Might Be a Duck, Jessica Rabbit, Jeremy Phillips, Alivania, Temple, King Mathy, and Demetrius Water. If you enjoy these videos and want to support the channel a little bit, please consider checking out our Patreon. For as little as $1 a month, you will gain access to our exclusive Discord, and get your name at the end of these videos, just like all of these amazing people, while also just supporting the channel in general. Thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, stay excellent.